Alright everyone, so welcome to a kind of different video, but today we'll be talking about what I just saw in the new Camp Cretaceous season, and that is the brand new thing E750 from what is it is referred to as. Yeah, you can see it has these spikes or spines down here. I'd assume this is like a tail. What's that? That's like a bump there. Hmm. Anyway, this is not the first time it was referenced. It was in season one. Right there. But anyway, in this video, we'll be talking about what creature it could possibly be. And every other creature that is still yet to appear in Camp Cretaceous. Season 2. So, we have Triceratops, Apatosaurus, Gallimimus, and the last herbivore we have probably seen in the Jurassic World movies is a Stygimolic. Now, I do not think any of these will be E750, because it almost felt more like it was a carnivore, and I've got one more, a couple more herbivores to mention, actually, so, something like the Mementi saw, apparently that has been mentioned, and might potentially be coming to future Camp Cretaceous season, we also have the Stegoceratops, which Dominion is confirmed to have no hybrids, but Camp Cretaceous, nothing has been said. However, I do not feel that E750 will be a herbivore. So let's get on to something more carnivorous, but also not too likely. First, we have the mentioned Plesiosaurus that has Camp Cretaceous packaging as a toy, but really if it broke free of that ice, it would be dead not too long after because it would have no water. Um, but another thing is, as an aquatic or semi-aquatic, it could be Dinosuchus. We have seen uh, the fossil of it. It was in the Jurassic World movie in a deleted scene, I think. So not sure if we can count it as canon. But it was used in Indominus Rex DNA, which is canon. So, with that crocodile roar, I'd say Dinosuchus. I would place four if I have to put it on a ranking tier list. Now, let's properly get into the carnivores. First, I want to talk about how Metriacanthosaurus was canon to the Jurassic franchise but was eventually finished off. Same with Microceratus, they just fell into extinction. Almost similar to the Dimorphodon, actually, which has not been seen in Camp Cretaceous at all. However, I feel these creatures are way too small and not, not really suited to be what I think it could be. True, Trodon, even though it is small, there is a picture of Trodon in Camp Cretaceous packaging as a toy, and if we remember the Telltale Trodon, which is similar to what the toy looks like, it was in like a sewer scene, or an underground area, so that could be a cool comeback. Now, another toy that has been in Camp Cretaceous packaging is surprisingly Monolophosaurus. I do not think this has ever been in official canon Jurassic movies or series, anything really. So it would be cool if we all see Monolophosaurus. However, I have my doubts it will be a Monolophosaurus. Alright, we are nearing the end. But before we finish off, I want to talk about the Allosaurus. It has not been seen anywhere in Camp Cretaceous. And I would say... It has not been seen before the 
Jurassic World 2015. Actually, 2018, actually. But the Lego series for Jurassic World would prove me wrong. This, I don't think you can exactly count it as canon, but Allosaurus is in it, and it uses the model from Battle at Big Rock. So, is the great Allosaurus from before a juvenile, and this is an adult? I think that that would be reasonable, but I want to talk about... Uh, actually, if you look at those spikes, it's kind of similar to E750, right on the back area. But, I do doubt it, because... I doubt there would be, like, testing on an Allosaurus. I feel it would be something much bigger. And I feel that Allosaurus I want to talk about, it was created on the mainland if it is not the same juvenile Allosaurus. Because people say they're waiting to see Nazuda's Ceratops and whatever. However, at the end of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, Ian Malcolm states that the cloning is open to everyone, basically. Everyone has the ability to create dinosaurs, Manticore, Biosyn, etc. Anyone could do it if they're smart enough, have the technology, because dinosaurs are free to roam the Earth now. So, I feel Jurassic World did not create this Allosaurus, nor the... Did I say Allosaurus? I meant Nazutoceratops. But either way, I mean both of them. So, I doubt that these two will appear in Camp Cretaceous on Isla Nublar. Alright, now let's get back on topic. In Camp Cretaceous. And I'm actually going to rank Baryonyx as the third possible creature. And why would I do that, you know? Baryonyx was already in the series. It'd be boring if that was the reveal, right? However, an early Baryonyx for the official 2015 Jurassic World had a much different model. And it was like a yellow, much skinnier version, almost aquatic-like. And it had kind of the spine, spinal... um. Spikes, I guess, that you see on the creature in E750. So it is possible. Now, the second place contender for E750 is weird, but bear with me, right? I believe it's an, a very early version of the Indoraptor, right? Like you can see the quills on the back, potentially that was what it was. But I feel the Indoraptor at the time, because it's an early version, would be something more like an Indominus Raptor. Something that's much closer resembling to an Indominus Rex, but also part more Raptor, basically. Something similar to this. Now, Indoraptor, the, the sound it made was basically crocodile sound, like the scream of the Baryonyx throughout the season. Why would it be Indoraptor? Well, technically, the Indoraptor is basically um, kind of a crocodile animation, I'd say, because it is actually based off one, or is used to create one, which is this guy, the Pyrolith, which is like full-on crocodile hybrid based off, and yeah, so that's a crocodile, but the other component is weird, why would it look like this? Because it's a Lithronax, so it's meant to be a crocodile, basically. So, what, it's like a really crocodile Indominus Rex version of Indoraptor? Maybe, but here's what you've all been waiting for. Number one, and number one goes to the Spinosaurus. Now, the Ceratosaurus in this season, right? I felt it was so out of place. Why was it there? How did it get there? Why was it on Isla Nublar? There was no reason given to it. I feel the reason is because this year is the 
20th anniversary of Jurassic Park 3. And they're bringing in creatures from Jurassic Park 3. What would be a better way to celebrate than to bring in the best creature of that movie, basically. The Spinosaurus. I think it would be a cool return. And also, Spinosaurus has been seen in Camp Cretaceous packaging. So, that really begs the question. Is it Spinosaurus, you know? I feel it has a high chance of being Spinosaurus, mostly to celebrate the Jurassic Park 3 20th anniversary. And the fact Spinosaurus was originally meant to appear in the Fallen Kingdom movie, it was in a deleted scene script. However, it just never made the final cut. They didn't want to do the rematch of T-Rex vs. Spino. So... If Spino does reappear, what do you think will happen with it? Leave your thoughts on what E750 is. It's still a mystery to everyone. I feel it's going to be more something Spinosaur, like Baryonyx, Spinosaurus maybe. Maybe even a hybrid, right? Like something like... Uh... The Triostronics. This guy. Yeah, see those quills? Possibly even something like the Spinotosuchus. But that is... These are not canon hybrids in Jurassic World Alive. So I wouldn't bet my money on it. I'd be going more with the Spinosaurus. What do you think? Leave in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.